And that unitary state then makes divine of everything that's happening in space-time. And here's the important thing. These are two separate paths. And one can, from any stage of development, access these states and no absolute truth. But here's the thing. If you're going to become one with this, you can only become one with what you're aware of. And what you're aware of is disclosed to you through the hidden meaning-making map of the particular psychological structure, life altitude, that you sort and see the world and co-create the world through. This is a critically important understanding. And if your center of gravity is modernist, postmodernist, mythic literal, power, narcissistic, egocentric, you can have a non-dual relationship to the world of form, but the world of form will be defined by your hidden meaning-making map and your developmental psychological structure. And so each one of these stages of evolution experiences enlightenment differently. They spirit absolutely in the same way. But when it binds to the world of form, it takes on a completely different complexion. And it is not until up here that we move into this next stage that this whole thing starts to go vertical that we're then able to start to capture this awakening three is basically what I call high epoch six and this non-dual state because now what's happened is this non-dual state, the filter it's looking through is evolutionary. It's now looking through all of it, all the way back to the Big Bang, and it is embodying the evolutionary current, the becoming, and it knows itself in process and this is something that was not available to Christ, Krishna, or the Buddha, or Mohammed. And when the highest structure stage starts to experience non-duality, we start to move into this awakening three, and the highest stage and the highest state start to become one thing. And it is my contention that we start to make obsolete the idea of states and stages as separate paths once we move into high epoch six or post turquoise to use integral terminology. But the points to remember are that as you're out here, right, you're doing your resolutions, you're doing your declaration, now you're unlocking your soul's purpose, now you're going to get out in the world and all, oh, man, it's all great when you're here, it's all great when you're in the fifth stage, and then what happens, right? quote a great line Mike Tyson the fighter when he was interviewed one time when he was at the peak of his career the interviewer was talking about the boxing match he had coming up with I think Michael Spinks, Spinks. and he said hey Michael Spinks says he has a plan for how to handle you in the ring and Tyson said everybody's got a plan until they get hit in the mouth And that's what happens when we go out there with the declaration, right? Right. <laughs> you're going to get hit in the mouth. And sometimes you're going to get hit a lot. And a lot, and a lot, and a lot. Because you're bringing an open heart and a higher stage into a world that is not adapted to it. And to do that, you need a relationship to that which in you, which is always already free, cannot be harmed, knows only peace, radiates love in every direction, and is pure witnessing awareness. And the felt sense of knowing consciousness and beingness is bliss. Which are the first three qualities of God once God takes on qualities. 
And if you don't know as your base state consciousness, beingness, and bliss going out there with your declaration, trying to grow in a world not ready for you, is going, it, it, there's going to come challenges. And knowing this changes everything. Having a relationship to that. And so the three awakenings, those are the three awakenings of tier four. So it moves, tier higher brain living moves this way until it can pull this up into here. Source code meditation moves this way, so we first access the awakening states and then we bring that into the world of form. Neither are necessarily right or wrong or better than the other. All roads into Rome, it lead to Rome, we want it all. We want to wake up and grow up. The important thing to remember is they're separate paths. Tier four emphasizes waking up. This is, real, this is the real spiritual work. Discovering that I and the Father are one. That's what happens here. So just uh, to clarify for myself, the awakening one is one and two, um, the world realization, the world is illusion, and only God is real. And then awakening to moving into three is God realizing, realizing God is the world. Yes. And then awakening three is. Recogni can I finish that? Recognizing God. Recognizing that God is the world. Awakening is recognizing that God in the, is the world, but the world is defined by and filtered through and co-created by whatever psychological structure stage I am at. And, God is and the world evolving. Yes. In me, as me, through me, and I feel myself cosmically, not pluralistically, cosmically, because I have embodied the entire spiral of psychological evolution, the entire cosmic journey of, of the first particles that emerge, and I feel the evolutionary impulse as primary. That's what is the purpose is generated through that evolutionary impulse is trying to push me forward because I'm in process. I'm not, I'm no longer looking through a filter. I am the leading edge of the entire process looking forward. Well, they're born into zero, but they have a, they have a, uh, up the, they have a center of gravity above them yeah. that helps pull them yeah. if okay. all conditions line up right. Is it ever possible that they could exceed the level of their culture, like the younger generation could exceed the older generation? Into that next level. And define younger because that's an important age, point. Age. So, like, we're talking millennials now versus baby boomers. Is it possible that millennials could have gone up through this and then break through into this new epoch six? Well, sure. Uh, it's possible that any of it. I mean, yeah. If, uh, I mean, it's not, it, it's not that there's a that there's a, a generation <coughs> that pushes through. It's whoever's being attracted to that. Well, and that grows through the, th so for, for that to happen in a millennial, and absolutely it's possible, and I want some of them in here. Adam's one of them right now. He's, he's about it here right now. But he's, <laughs> he, well, he, sorry Adam, I love you. I love, I love. <laughs> Most of the time, are supposed to be human. Yeah, I'm sorry, Adam. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't know if you know that. <laughs> I'm, sorry. I'm sorry, Adam. <laughs> He's at least up to here. <laughs> 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 
No, in all seriousness, of course millennials can, but, but the, the thing to remember is that they still have to grow through all these stages. And so far the developmental research tells us to, to, to get to really healthy green postmodern, you've got to be about 25 years old. The other thing is that's also about when the co prefrontal cortex fully wires into the system, which is why some of the ideas about you know the enlightened children are just ridiculous new age fantasies because the, the neurological correlates aren't even there uh, for, for them to enact uh, the, the, these types of enlightenment states or, or, or uh, higher structure stages of development. And so And is that? Okay, okay, okay. And so let me let me put one nuance on that. So here's what else the developmental research says before people even move into the very first bit of what I'm calling epoch six, which is early teal, usually doesn't happen until their fifties. And it's one of the tragedies right now is that. It's, you, can, you can take the average politician, the average academic, and you can say, would you agree that children develop through these different stages of growth? And every single person will say yes. But they have no idea that what can happen between 25 and 50 is also a whole other sequence of developmental hierarchies. And so we're left to fumble around. That's what happens, it's like 25 years of fumbling around before a few of us start to peek into this. And that needs to change, right? We wanna create a path for millennials to jump off of here at 25 and get into here at 28. Yeah, so that was gonna be my, my, my next question. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And so there's no, it, you know, there, there. It's anyone born now or alive now has the capacity to move through this. The challenge with so many of us today is we have ossified so much incomplete development from the way our lower left and lower right have been structured yes. that we're just a wounded mess. And there's a lot of work to be done to free that up, to build a foundation to stand on. And we do that in the New Human University. What is the minimum age required to join the New Human University? 18. Minimum age, and I interview them, and it would take a really exceptional 18-year-old. I would have to know that they were either orange exit or had grown into green by that period of time and that they had what it took to get on the path. <laughs>